hello students welcome to my class students so today we will discuss about uh, the political science in in your political science the first lesson will be our constitution the concept of constitution you are keep keep on learning from when, when you, uh, from past year from past one year students so here today i will give a small inter introduction regarding our indian constitution so students uh, before indian independence you know that the british were ruling our country and uh, there was no rules and there is no regulations and there was no freedom for us yes or no so the british they introduce as per their ideas their ideologies we have to accept by force otherwise we are punishable so this was the system so there was no rules and regulations there was no freedom there was no rights for indians so so in uh, in in 1931 in 1931 so indian national congress indian national congress under the leadership of uh, motilal nehru so there was a meeting held in uh, 1931 under the leadership of motilal nehru so they in that meeting they decided and they came to conclude to formation of indian constituent assembly indian constituent assembly so in indian national constituent assembly so indian national congress they introduced the concept of indian uh, constituent assembly so in 1946 just before indian independence just before indian independence so the first meeting of indian constituent assembly was held in 9th december in 1946 9 december 1946 so there was a different committees there was a different committees worked on indian constitution so there was a advisory committee there was a financial committee there was a drafting committee so like this a financial committee so like this there was a different committees to work on indian constitution the main responsibility was the drafting committee drafting committee so drafting committee was the important committee to frame the indian constitution so in drafting committee took 11 months 18 days to complete to write indian constitution so in each and every committee there was a convener there was a head for each and every committee so dr b r ambedkar was the main con committee convener and he was the head for drafting committee so he was the chairman he was the chairman for drafting committee so he was the responsible for to write or uh, to draft the indian constitution so under the leadership of dr b r ambedkar so our indian constitution was framed it was framed so not only the indian constitution means not only the ambedkar was responsible so i told you before only there was a different committees there was a different committee so each and every committee members was worked on to frame the indian constitution for editing and for compiling dr b r ambedkar was the responsible in drafting committee so finally uh, so drafting committee took 11 months 18 days to complete to to make the indian constitution so it was completed the indian constitution was completed finally at 26 november 26 november 1949 26 november 1949 so 26 november every day every year 26 november is celebrated as constitution divas samvidana divas samvidana divas the constitutional day so in 1950 january 26th january 26 in 1950 our indian constitution came into force came into force and india declared as republican country or democratic country so what is the meaning of this so each and every individuals each and every citizens in our country got the freedom of religion some rights rules and regulations so uh, living freely without any restrictions so before there was a british rule there was a restrictions so after indian constitution 
of Indian independence. So there was a freedom for us, each and every one. There was a, there was a, <coughs> some rights, some rights. So which is applicable for in in their di daily life. So this was the introduction for Indian uh, national. So Indian our constitution, Indian constitution. Just hold on, students. Well, students, the next concept, concept will be the salient features of Indian constitutions. Salient fe features of Indian constitutions. Uh, okay, students, uh, our Indian constitutions, our Indian constitution is in written and lengthy compared to other countries. We have very lengthy and it is written. It is written, written not oral constitution. So it is a written in form and it is very lengthy. So at present, at present, uh, our constitution has 25 chapters before it was 22 so it now it is 25 chapters 12 schedules and 465 articles each and every schedule article and chapter gives a rules and regulations to each and every individuals and for the government next flexible and partially rigid flexible and partially rigid so there will be a lenience and there will be a strict rules and regulations is applicable for in for citizens next parliamentary form of a government parliamentary form of a government means bicameral system we can see bicameral system means we have two houses in parliament Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha Lok Sabha is considered as lower house Rajya Sabha is considered as upper house so parliamentary form of a government we have and a republican system means public is power means democ uh, so ours is a democratic country india is a democratic country so here the most more power is lies uh, on the public on the public demand so here public is a strength so we used to call republican system so federal system federal system means more than one level of government more than one level of government so we have a central government to to look after ad, uh, administration in uh, country and we have state government to look in uh, state level and we have local self government in district and taluk and village uh, level so like this we have more than uh, one level of government so that is central level state level and local self government so once again taluk panchayat jilla panchayat and gram panchayat so this type of system we have we used to call federal system and fundamental rights so there are six fundamental rights right to education right to freedom of religion right against exploitation right to constitutional remedies culture and education rights so right to equality so these are the six fundamental rights which is applicable for each and every individuals each, each and every citizens in our country next is judicial system we have court system we have supreme court we have state uh, we have uh, high court in state level and we have subordinate courts we have subordinate courts we have courts in district level taluk level and in gram panchayat level also we have uh, a system of court so these are the silent features of indian constitution and single citizenship we don't follow dual citizenship so in what will happen in other countries a person can get a, a two citizenships dual citizenship but in our country only single citizenship single citizenship Next, adult franchise, like uh, universal adult franchise. So, 18 years is reserved for uh, a citizens. Uh, if the 18 years is reserved to get the rights, some kind of rights. For example, right to vote. Right to vote is not possible for each and every one. Only a, uh, the person who is 18 years and above 18 years is on, uh, they only uh, responsible or applicable to uh, to get the vote right to vote so before that he is uh, he or she is considered as a minor so when the people when uh, a person will reach a some certain age 18 years so he will become a major so it is called adult franchise adult franchise so like other countries universal universal adult franchise the concept of universal adult franchise we also kept in our indian constitution so this is the silent features 
Next is bicameral system. Just now I told you before only in parliamentary forum we have bicameral. Bicameral means two level, two houses. Unicameral means only one house we can see. So bicameral means two houses like Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha. In some states uh, we have bicameral system like uh, Vidhana Sabha and Vidhana Parishad. For example, Karnataka we have two houses in Vidhana Sabha. So it is a bicameral Vidhana Parishad and Vidhana Sabha. So like that in central and state level we have bicameral system on the on the depend on the depend upon the population of the state so this is about the salient features of indian constitution so i think this much is enough for today just read the uh, textbook if you if you find any uh, difficulties or doubts please contact us thank you